My hoarder boyfriend is mad I threw out his illegal yogurt. I actually don't know if it's fair to call my boyfriend a hoarder, since he usually keeps things pretty clean. But when he collected more than 2,000 cups of yogurt, our place started to smell rank pretty fast. This was hard enough to deal with, but I actually think some of his yogurt might have broken international trade laws. Between the legal issues and the smell, I decided to throw it out. But what if the Iranian yogurt isn't the issue here? My boyfriend and I have been living together for two years in a little studio in a very big, expensive U.S. city. My boyfriend grew up rurally, with lots of space, enough to collect all kinds of things. He collected action figures and video games and all the normal kid stuff when he was young. But as he grew older, he became interested in more unusual things. As a teen, he had eight guinea pigs of different types from different breeders. Since Tide Pods were released, he's saved one of every kind of Tide Pods. He's got a big box of an international variety of electric insulators. Those little ceramic hats that power lines wrap around on power poles. He's usually neat. He's just used to having lots of space for his bizarro collections. At his parents' ranch, he has two big rooms full of containers of weird and impressive things. He recently became interested in yogurt. He's always hated dairy products, until about a year ago. He not only started drinking milk and sharing ice cream with me, but he's found a love for yogurts. So he now collects them, of course. The problem is that they're perishable. So, until earlier today, our little 550-square-foot studio contained about 2,100 cups of yogurt. It comes in tons of varieties. Different types, flavors, textures, containers, made by different companies in different countries. He tried to pretty much save a sample of everything he could find. He filled our fridge, bought a new fridge, and then another tiny bedside fridge. He said he didn't want to walk to the fridge at night, but it was obviously a ruse to get more yogurt space. These fridges all filled up with his yogurts, and if you keep them for long, they smell bad. Sometimes the packaging breaks, so our apartment was smelling like rotten milk for the last two weeks. And my boyfriend's attitude was, oh, it's fine, and just deal with it for a little longer. Until I pulled the plug and threw it all out this morning. I was looking at my groceries, which I had to put beside the fridge because there was no space and everything smelled like decay. And then I kind of snapped and threw it all away. My boyfriend is understandably upset. We've been arguing about whether I crossed the line by throwing away his stuff. And he's especially upset because he, of course, had rare yogurts that were hard to find. In particular, he had some Cuban and Iranian yogurts that you can't get in the U.S., but I know that we have trade sanctions against Iran and Cuba, so I don't know if it was even legal for him to have them. I asked where he got his Iranian yogurt, but he kept insisting the Iranian yogurt is not the issue here, and that the real issue was me throwing out his precious yogurts without his permission. Am I the jerk here? Do I need legal advice? Thanks in advance. I'm so exasperated. I feel a little upset that none of the comments really answer this original poster's request for legal advice. Not most of them, anyway. One person suggested the boyfriend could sue OP for throwing out his belongings without his permission. Because if there's one thing judges hate, it's people who refuse to keep three fridges full of expired food in their home. Just imagine the entitlement of a person who thinks they deserve a fresh-smelling house. That Iranian yogurt might have been worth a fortune one day. In all seriousness, it's hard to even imagine the boyfriend's side of this. He told her to just deal with it a little longer. A little longer until what? Was he planning to eat the spoiled yogurt one day? Did he think he could sell it to another yogurt collector? I feel like I could ask both of these same questions about the Tide Pods. In any case, OP's definitely not the jerk here. Some commenters believe she could have talked to him or given him an ultimatum before throwing it out, but it actually sounds like she tried to do that, and he just kept putting it off. At that point, she has a right to prioritize her own health and comfort over her boyfriend's weird love of flavored bacteria. But if you happen to have any legal advice for her, feel free to share it in the comments. Nobody else will for some reason. My wife won't stop crying over a can of soup. My wife is four months pregnant with our fifth child. We have a 7-year-old girl, 6-year-old girl, 4-year-old boy, and a 2-year-old boy now. Since childcare is so expensive, she's been staying home. 
Money is tight right now, and her car broke down, so we've been relying on mine. She texted me and told me she was craving a particular can of soup. So I bought it and brought it home. She placed it on the counter and said she would make it after she gave the kids a bath. While she was upstairs, my dad came over and mentioned he was hungry. So I told him to help himself to anything in the kitchen, as we had made dinner shortly before. Well, he ended up leaving to go home, and my wife came downstairs. Then I heard her frantically searching for something. I asked what she was doing, and she was looking for the soup she left out. I told her I haven't seen it, and that my dad came over, but he usually doesn't eat canned foods. I called him, and he admitted he did in fact take it, and that he was sorry because he was unaware she was saving it. When I told her this, she started sobbing and saying she can never have one thing in this house, and how bad she was craving it. She cried for almost an hour over it. Later, I told her that she was being ridiculous, and that she was an adult. Crying over something as stupid as a can of soup is for children. She told me I didn't understand, and that she's feeling very emotional lately and stressed. I talked to my mom, who told me I needed to give her grace, and that my words were very jerk ish Am I the jerk for telling my wife it's ridiculous to cry over soup? Reddit tore this guy a new one, and for good reason. Not only is he the jerk for criticizing his wife over her reaction to the soup that he basically gave away because he somehow forgot that he'd just bought it for her, but now he's trying to focus on that instead of the much bigger issue. This woman stays at home with four very young children all day. Yes, OP is working, and his contributions matter, but why is his pregnant wife bathing four kids without help? And even if his dad doesn't usually eat canned food, it's still weird to tell the man he can have anything in the kitchen when OP knows that at least one thing is off limits. Well, OP took his criticisms pretty hard, so he responded with the following update. When I leave work, I'm going to go buy her all the vegetable soup they have in stock. Also, when I say money is tight, I don't mean that we're struggling to survive. We took out a loan to build three extra bedrooms out of our home. Her car broke down about two months ago. I do leave her the car if she needs to take our daughter and son to their therapy appointments or if she wants to go somewhere. I was also outside the building when my dad popped over. He stopped by to see if I needed help building the rooms. My wife was upstairs for a while doing bedtime routines, so they didn't see each other. I'll apologize and do the bedtime routine tonight and pick out the scariest shark movie I can find. She loves Jaws movies, so we'll spend some time together. I do love my wife, even if it doesn't appear that way. Also, yes, we have five kids, but we wanted a big family. I wanted three, she wanted four. I was an only child, and she came from a big family. We had four. She had an IUD, and it went through her uterus. We found out about this baby at the same time. We both agreed we wanted this child. She told the doctor the same day that after delivery, she wanted her tubes tied. We aren't struggling to survive. We have food, shelter, clothes, and occasionally we go out to dinner and take the kids to fun places. The only issue is childcare, because it's cheaper for her to stay home, and she asked me if it would be okay until our youngest goes to preschool. We may have a lot of kids, but we do take care of them. I work long hours at two jobs, so I'm pretty exhausted when I come home. Plus, I'm building rooms for our children. I do help with my children. I love my family. I won't challenge that OP loves his family, or that he works hard. But you can love someone and still love them poorly. And this update honestly makes him sound worse in some ways. Is the living situation so cramped that they need three extra rooms? And they didn't realize this several pregnancies ago? Also, if the wife is getting the kids ready for bed, why would he be doing construction right now? Is building three bedrooms something you can do quietly? Or do two-year-olds not need sleep? If OP is really building these rooms by himself, then he basically has a built-in excuse not to help with the children for months into the foreseeable future. It also sounds like he didn't take up his dad's offer to help since the man just popped by, stole some soup, and then dipped out. That would have been a great opportunity for OP to have his dad chip in while OP helped with the kids and let his wife relax for five minutes. That's one minute for each of the children she's been consistently popping out every year or two, not to mention one minute for every paragraph of excuses OP has for why he's a great husband after Reddit had to teach him that raising four kids without help is stressful. But hey, at least his wife gets to watch Jaws. I'm sure that woman will probably take any win she can get right now. I tried to lock my girlfriend out of the fridge, but she broke in anyway.
I'm in my first serious relationship with H. We've been together just under a year. She moved into my place three months ago. Everything was fine in the beginning, but once we started seeing each other more frequently, I noticed her bad habit. Every time we went out and food was involved, she would sample my food before I got to it. We're not just talking about a chip here and there from my chip butt sandwich. In actual classy places, she would take the first chunk of my steak, salmon, or cake. You name it, she would take the first bite. I had several talks with her about this, but she said it was cute and not sinister. Four months ago, H got a job with a training opportunity. After completion, when she returns to her normal place, the salary will be higher. My place is 40 minutes closer than where she used to live, and I offered to let her live with me rent-free if she stopped this behavior. The first month, she stuck to our agreement. The second month, she slipped up a few times. This last month, she's gone back to her old ways. Last weekend was a turning point. I bake as a hobby. Last weekend, I made cake. After dividing it into eight slices, I left it in the fridge while I went out with a friend. Usually when I bake and friends drop me off, I will fetch a few slices and thank them for the lift home with the cake. Imagine my surprise when I saw that each piece had a bite taken out of it. I phoned my friend that I owed him cake and he needn't wait for me to come back down. I was angry. I told her that she embarrassed me and we needed to figure out a solution. She got defensive and said she ate it due to loving me so much. That all women do this and guys love it. I made it very clear that she needed to stop now or there would be consequences. The next day, I bought a lockbox for the fridge. She was livid, but couldn't do much. Last night, she broke the lock and had taken a bite out of all my snacks and two slices of baguettes in there. I told her to pack her stuff and leave while I stay with my mother for a few hours. She called me a jerk for making her homeless and possibly ruining her employment opportunities. Am I? First of all, for anyone else who was confused, a chip butt sandwich is apparently not a thing but a chip buddy is a sandwich full of french fries. That's second on the list of words OP has odd ideas about, the first one being sinister. He also has odd ideas about cake. Pre-slicing it is a good way to dry it out. Not only is he paying for gas money and cake on the heels of a gas crisis, but he's devaluing the cake first. Don't get me wrong, his girlfriend's a total jerk here. Either I've gone unloved my whole life, or her statement about all women doing this is nonsense. I've made cake for women before, and not one of them took territorial bites out of every single slice. Most commenters had trouble believing this man wasn't dating a raccoon. It's possible that he's a jerk for reacting so strongly, since his warning didn't make it clear he was about to kick her out, and it's possible she has some bizarre eating disorder that he should have picked up on after the first several times she cut into his steak without permission. If that's the case, moving in with her in the first place was a bad idea. But just in case there were any doubts that he wants us to side against the girlfriend here, he goes out of his way to tell people in the comments that his girlfriend is a self-proclaimed Afghan princess who drinks her period blood in magic rituals. Gotta wash all that cake down with something, I guess. What do you think? Is OP a jerk here? Or is Raccoon Girl a big enough jerk to justify his actions? Let us know your thoughts down below. Some people eat two waffles for breakfast, and I am not okay with that. I was staying at a hotel in Chicago last month with my children, a 22-year-old male and 18-year-old female, and the place offered free breakfast for guests. They had the usual cereal, juice, coffee, yogurt, and fruit set up, they also had one waffle maker that made one waffle at a time. It was in a smallish room on the sixth floor with about 20 or more people in there. I was hungry, but waited patiently in line as each waffle cycle takes three minutes. There was a youngish adult woman ahead of me. Just as she finished removing her waffle and I started stepping forward, she poured the batter for a second waffle. I'm guessing it was for a friend back at the room. Three more minutes of standing there as the table started filling up. I loudly said something like, A second waffle? I didn't realize we were doing that. Another one? She didn't respond. I let out a sigh and sat down at a table to eat my other non-waffle breakfast food. When she was done, the nice guy who had been behind me tapped me on the shoulder and said I could go ahead and make mine. I thanked him and did just that. Then I thanked him again as I was leaving. Am I the jerk for saying something and not just waiting? 
Or should she have made one waffle and got back in line for the second one? What if she decided to make waffles for two more friends? That's six more minutes of everyone standing there. Typing this out, I realize this is one of the most minor situations I've seen here, yet I'm still thinking about it. So here we are. First of all, thanks for telling us how old your kids are. I was itching to know the age and gender of two people who don't even appear in this story. Second, a lot of commenters felt this OP was absolutely the jerk here for being petty about a three minute wait. He doesn't actually have a shred of evidence that this woman was making the waffle for a friend. And even if she had been, why would it make sense for one of them to get a cold waffle? Also, if she did have two more friends she wanted to make waffles for, she could have politely said so, and everyone but OP probably would have been fine with it. Six minutes is not a long wait when all of your other food is served cold. There are definitely limits to what this girl was doing, but she didn't come anywhere near hitting them. It sounds like OP might just be a little stuck up. Some people are so used to getting their way, they can't help but throw a fit when they are let down. There's no evidence from this story alone that OP is that type of person, but feel free to check his username in the video description. My wife put a used pregnancy test in my pumpkin soup. Me and my wife got married last September, and we are both 24. We both have some money saved, but before we got married, we said we wanted to wait around 3 or 4 years until we tried for a baby because we wanted to be able to provide as much as we could for our future children and possibly have put down a deposit to move into a forever home. My wife has been on birth control since we started dating, or was, I should now say. And I also always offer to use rubbers, but she refuses. Last night I was eating a bowl of pumpkin soup when I got to the bottom and found a positive pregnancy test. I started laughing because I initially thought she was pranking me. She then told me to come with her and took one in front of me. At this point, I knew it wasn't a prank, and I put my hands up to my head and asked her how she's pregnant if she was on birth control. She told me she secretly hasn't been taking it for the past four months, and she is nine weeks pregnant. I calmly told her I needed a minute and went outside. Because, I'll be honest, I am in no way mentally ready to take care of a baby. Her face dropped and she started crying saying I was ungrateful and that she was upset because I wasn't excited. I feel kind of betrayed because I would have really appreciated if she told me first before she stopped taking birth control. I slept on the couch last night because she threw my clothes outside and said, you're more of a baby than the one in my stomach. I felt bad that she cried because I don't want her to be upset. I love her and our child that she's carrying. The next morning, I apologized and asked if we could talk but she was giving me the silent treatment. She then rolled out a suitcase and told me to go and stay with my parents until I learned how to show respect. She had her mom on speakerphone telling me, step up for my daughter, you jerk hole. I was shocked and honestly hurt that my wife and mother-in-law were speaking to me like this. So I took the suitcase and I'm at my parents right now. I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything, but I know it'll work out okay. Am I the jerk? The comments on this post raise so many questions. First off, how did this guy get all the way to the bottom of the soup bowl before noticing there was a used pregnancy test floating around in there? Was the bowl that deep, or is he that oblivious? You don't need to tell us that you're not mentally ready for a baby, when it sounds like you're not even mentally ready to eat soup. Also, he says his wife took a pregnancy test in front of him. Would you care to elaborate on that, OP? Because I'm sure the way I'm picturing this has to be wrong. Almost as wrong as a grown woman saying that her baby is in her stomach. On the off chance this is real, commenters are saying go to the police and file a report. Not because she tricked him into a pregnancy without his consent, but because she ruined his soup. Has anyone else had enough Reddit for today? Either way, let us know in the comments which of these savants is the jerk and why. Click on one of the videos you see on the screen now or a Karen will sue you.